it, eh? <laughs> what was that laugh for? Just, I just said hi. <laughs> this is why I love doing comedy in America. You guys are so supportive here, eh? Like, you do comedy here and Americans are like, All right, man, we're here. We're here for you. You're going to tell jokes. We're going to laugh at the joke. <laughs> New Zealand's not like, it's, I'm from a very small country. There's four million people in New Zealand, the whole country. So, like, people get really angry at anyone trying to achieve anything or do anything. And, yeah, they do. Like, in America, if someone does really well for themselves and they've got, like, an awesome house, you know, great family, great job, Americans look at them and they're like, oh, my God, I'm so proud of that guy. Oh, I'm so proud of him. He's got such a good house. I'm proud to live in the same country as a guy who works as hard as that man. The same guy in New Zealand, eh? Kiwis would be like, who does he think he is in Splash House? <laughs> Making us all look bad. <laughs> Just have a shit house like the rest of us, Brian. All right? <laughs> I get, you know, I, need to, I haven't been, like, heckling doesn't really happen that much here. Like, the closest thing I've had to a heckle in America is someone going, right on! <laughs> in New Zealand, you get heckled, but people don't really, they're not very good at it. This guy heckled me once, he goes, what are you wearing tight pants for? Are you gay, mate? Right. Are you a homosexual? But then he goes, take them off, which confused me. <laughs> No end. I had no idea what that was all about. Hey, so I, I, live, I live here now. Uh, I live in America. Uh, people say, Steve, why do you live in the States? You're from New Zealand. Why would you, why would you move out here? Uh, it's because I met an American woman and I hid a baby inside her. <laughs> she doesn't know yet. But, uh, <laughs> when she finds out. <laughs> no, she we, got, we got a kid, he's two and a half. We first met. It's, American women are amazing. And uh, you're exotic. You're the, uh, American woman to make some noise. American ladies, can I make a bit of noise? <laughs> All right! <laughs> you're so confident, eh? And you've got such a good sense of humor. I think your sense of humor is the most important thing you can find in a partner, by the way. Uh, someone who, like, I realize, like, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not, not the hottest, I'm probably like a, maybe like a 5.6. Oh, you go fuck yourselves, Rochester, honestly. No, I don't even want it. You, fuck you, man. I get up here and I go, I'm a 5.6, like slightly above average, and your response is to go, hey, calm down, Ridley. Okay. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, mate. That's like I say, a sense of humor is the most important thing you can find another person. I was outside a comedy show 10 years ago. Beautiful American girl comes up to me. <laughs> she comes up to me and she goes, excuse me, are you Steve Wrigley, the comedian? And, uh, and I was excited that she knew I was a comedian because I'm not very good, like, you know. It, honestly, it's like, it's like fucking a chubby metronome. It's just, it's rhythmic and consistent, but disappointing. And, but like, I was happy that she knew I was a comic, not that, not that that helps. Like, you can't be sort of savagely disappointing a woman in the bedroom and then try to liven things up by go, okay, let me tell you about this time I got heckled in New Zealand, okay? It <laughs> doesn't work. But she goes, are you Steve Wrigley, the comedian? I said, yeah, I am. And she goes, okay, well, I just want to tell you, I don't think you're funny. Uh, I don't think you're, I think you're offensive. I think you're mean. I think you're the worst comedian I've ever seen. I was heartbroken. I said, really? This is where I fell in love with her. She goes, no, I've got no idea who you are, but your friend Ben paid me 20 bucks to come over here and say that. <laughs> yeah. I was in love straight away, right? We went out. I said, I said, oh, well, hey, sorry, technically I helped you earn that 20 bucks, so maybe you and I, we should use that 20 bucks. We'll go out, we'll get, we'll go have a couple of drinks together. And she said, sure, fair is fair, no problem. I say that. <laughs> but her, her sense of humor is the best, right? And probably her crowning achievement, uh, my wife, was when we told my mother and father that we were getting married. Now, my mum is a very, very strict Christian German woman, okay? And I'm not going to make fun of Christians. I love Christians. I think it's great there are people out there who still believe in magic, okay? <laughs> okay. It's awesome. But Germans are the most terrifying people on the face of the earth. There's, I don't know if you've ever talked to Germans, but there's something about the way. Whenever they talk to you, it sounds like they're planning to kill you. <laughs> they could be, like, it could be a perfectly innocent conversation. You could be like, a German could come up to me in the street and go, Excuse me, sir. 
I'm just curious. Do you happen to have the time? <laughs> I'm really worried if I go, oh yeah, dude, it's 12.45. He's going to go, oh, 12.45, is it? You shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> now I have everything I need to take over as a <laughs> My mum, scary German woman, she's sitting at the head of the table. I'm from a big family. We've got people here from, who've got lots of brothers and sisters here. Yeah, you do. How many only children have we got here? None. Thank God. <laughs> only children are the worst people on the face of the earth, am I right? <laughs> They are, like you can always spot an only child. Like something will be coming around at a dinner party that's supposed to be shared for everyone. And an only child would be like, I'm gonna take as much as I like. It's all for me. I fed myself while my parents starved in the corner. <laughs> I don't know why I made them sound like a villain from Game of Thrones. What it makes me a bird works, it all works. <laughs> But then, you know, if you're from a big family, whenever you see that sort of behavior at a dinner party, we know the rules, kids with brothers and sisters. The amount of shit on the table divided by the number of people at the fucking table <laughs> is precisely how much you are allowed to take. Dude, my, do you remember how bad it was if your brother or sister got even like a little bit more ice cream than you? And you're like, hey, you gave them more than me, bro. And, then, yeah, and your mum's like the United Nations trying to even it out, you know? And then she accidentally, now she's accidentally given you more than your brother and you make it worse by going, ha, <laughs> yeah, My dad was so starved for entertainment, he would deliberately give one kid an extra piece of cake, you know? <laughs> Watch them fight for my love, honey, here we go. Yeah. And my sister's favorite thing was cheesecake. If cheesecake came down, she would be like, nobody move! And I swear to God, come back from her bedroom with a ruler, a compass, and a protractor. <laughs> and she would measure everyone's slice out by the degree. The compass, she just held over it like a weapon. If anyone tried to touch it before she was done, you'd get stabity stab stab by her, right? And it made bath time terrifying. We were a poor family, we didn't have a lot of money, right? Uh, my dad's idea of a trip to the zoo was the frozen food section of the supermarket. <laughs> Yeah. You ever had kids from a big family? You ever that thing where your parents made you bathe together? If we don't have a lot of money, what we're going to do is put about three inches of water in the tub and just jam you all in there like wheatgrass, right? Four boys, one girl in my family. My brothers and I, terrified of our sister at bath time. We're all naked in the tub. We're all worried that any second now, my sister's going to be like, Hold on a second. Mum and Dad gave you slightly more than me. <laughs> Where's my compass? <laughs> Dangerous shit, man. But anyway, sorry, I got off track. So we're all sitting at the family dinner table. We're going to tell my mum and dad that we are engaged, that we're going to get married for the first time. My wife, funniest woman in the world, right? So I go, hey mum, hey dad, brothers, sisters, all, all ye gathered here today, um, as we say at Christian dinner tables. Uh, all ye gathered here today, uh, I, have a, I have a decree. Uh, no, I said, we're, we're engaged. Uh, we're we're going to get married. And there was this kind of dead silence at the dinner table. And uh, my mother goes, okay, this is obviously exciting news for your father and I. We are just wondering, though, whether or not the two of you are going to wait until you are married before you consummate this union in a sexual fashion. I didn't know what to say. My brothers and sisters are all looking at each other like, oh, this is gonna be fucking gross. <laughs> my dad, I looked at my dad, and my dad was looking at me like, I, I was not briefed. Yes. No idea what's going on, but I've long learned a fear of your mother, and I will play along. I didn't know what to do. Dead silence. My, wi my wife to be, confident as fuck, hilarious American woman, looks my mum straight in the eyes and she goes, Well, Mrs. Wrigley, I don't know if this counts, but I'm waiting until we're married before I finally start to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I look over at my dad and my dad's looking at me like... <laughs> but you, you can... 
you can enjoy it. <laughs> Didn't realize that was a rule. Uh, anyway, guys, that's it. That's, uh, that's all the time. It's really fun talking to you guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. Yeah.